Hello everyone, I'm Josep Maggiore and welcome to the Introduction to React course. In this lesson, as you can see on the screen, we're going to look at JSX. In particular, we will see how through JSX we can assemble and organize a visual scene of all these different HTML components and their nesting, also the repetition, the naming of such repetitions for later reuse and so on. We will create our own simple custom components and also we will look into why the key property is so important, especially in the context of the DOM, which is the document object model on the screen, and the virtual DOM, which is maintained by React for performance and um, logical purposes. All right. Now, first of all, let's uh, start up our uh, little project. We go into the client folder, we run yarn fa, very good, webpack is starting up, the front end is being compiled, and in the server folder, the spa bundle js with the compiled TypeScript files, compiled and stitched together into a single file, and also the map, which maps the TypeScript sources to the compiled JavaScript, so that if there are errors, the errors can be given in the TypeScript sources, which is super handy for debugging. Uh, and these two files, together with index.html, are served by the server. Uh, so let's do the yarn backend, and the server is starting, and we get a helpful message stating your application running on port 5000 is available. Oh, very good. Let's see if we can preview it here. Oh, also, well, very nice. Hmm. Well, sometimes we could even we could even decide to do this. Okay, now, actually, because this is something we do very often, I would like to show a little bit trick, uh, a little trick right before we dive into it. Okay, so we go to the parent folder and we do touch startup dot sh. Sh stands for shell. So we have this little file here. What are we going to do? Well, uh, we are going to set up. Okay, first, we're going to state that this file is going to be executed by uh, bin slash bash. So this is a very useful hint, and this hint uh, tells uh, our machine to run this file uh, as, a, as a command line script. And in here, what we're going to do is we're going to jump into the client folder. Then, well, for good measure, we're just going to run a yarn install, especially if it's the first time we do this. And in parallel to this, we're going to jump into the server folder and here also run yarn and then yarn be. Okay, the camera just gets in the way exactly right. Okay, and here we can say uh, startup dot. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Then we have to make sure that we can actually run this file. So uh, change the permissions to execute of file uh, startup dot sh. So now we should be able to run it. And at the same time, and in the same console, we see the output of both commands. It's not a particularly substantial thing to learn, but it is very, very, very handy. So I try to set up not only in the package.json all the commands uh, that are required, but also some startup commands, because when you're working with other people, it's going to be particularly important for them not to have to uh, dig out of a readme file um, what they're supposed to do. And yeah, obviously in a readme file, you will probably still have to mention that there is a, there is a startup.sh file available, sure. But at least you're taking all the thresholds away so that people are not cognitively overloaded before even starting to code with you on your project. Okay, good. Now, how does React work? React manages the dynamic composition of a virtual scene of nested HTML components. And this scene managed by React is then mounted, that's the verb, to mount, to the DOM of the browser. Okay, so what's the DOM? The DOM is basically, uh, well, let me open uh, a Chromium browser. Just wake up. And 
also blessing by to the operating system to very kindly shut up at least on our very good okay so let's open this thing is running on localhost 5000 very good so uh, localhost 5000 there we go okay now what is the dom the dom is basically if you look at the page source this hierarchy of nested elements that's that's what it is but if you look at the source the original source that was sent well obviously this source has nothing to do with what's actually shown right now on the screen because the dom gets updated by react in particular if we take a look at uh, well, let me move this to the bottom of the screen yes very good it's nice for you guys to see my face but it's nicer for you guys to actually see uh, what's on the screen okay now we can see that inside this div root the the actual dom has been changed the dom is adjusted dynamically all the time by single page uh, or even by javascript applications and here we see another div has been inserted okay now this is the dom and javascript and react will maintain in memory a parallel mirror of the dom the virtual dom and every 12, 15, 16 milliseconds, so trying to do this in real time, let's say at about 60 frames per second, React will try to take all the differences between the virtual DOM and the DOM and take the virtual DOM and copy it over to the DOM. And you might wonder, why doesn't React do this for every single change? Like every time you render, you just pump, mount everything. Well, because uh, this mounting process can be done only for the things that are actually different and in batches, like in blocks of operations. And this actually makes the whole process faster because if React try to say, okay, destroy the DOM and here's everything again, every time, rebuilding the elements that are there would take too much time for nothing because the elements that don't change, there's no reason to rebuild them and there's no reason for the user to wait for them. So this data structure in memory, the virtual DOM is super fast to update because, well, yeah, it's a data structure in memory, so there's no overhead associated to it. And then copying this over to the DOM on the browser can be done very quickly because React says, okay, these are the things that are different in the virtual DOM, so these things need to go to the DOM, but these other things have remained exactly the same and we don't do anything with them. So, uh, and obviously the code you don't execute is the code that is the fastest of all. Okay. React also introduced the JavaScript and TypeScript extensions TSX for TypeScript and JSX for JavaScript where we can pretend that we are writing HTML elements but actually what is happening is that this thing is created as an object in memory an object with a descriptor that says okay I'm a, I'm, I'm a JavaScript I'm a DOM element but well, a virtual DOM element and by just thinking about what this is going to look like in the DOM we are saved from having to think about the fact that actually there is an object here, uh, so we, we could say that we have would have to create like create element, and then we could say okay, you're a DOM, uh, sorry, ah, DOM, you're a div, and these are your properties and blah blah blah. No, we just say there you go, a lot more visually appealing, and then we don't have to think about the fact that this is an object in the virtual DOM, but rather we just think st think about the fact that this will become this div in the actual DOM. Very cool. We can use any HTML tags we want. So, and we can use any attributes we want. So you see about, access key, blah, 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 blah. There's uh, so much. In many cases, also so much legacy in a sense. There you go. With one main difference class does not work it's in react it's called class name why class name because class is a reserved keyword so that class a person with a constructor attributes etc and because uh, class is such a powerful keyword in the javascript and typescript languages and it has been there for many many years then yeah sorry unfortunately react had to suck it up and use class name in order to avoid 
um, too many clashes that could screw up the compiler's ability to understand the language. But for the rest, anything, so you could just take a web page, copy it, paste it in a React source, change class into class name everything everywhere, and everything would still just work. And well, we can do whatever we want. We could say, uh, for example, article, uh, and we could say that uh, the class, oops, class name is uh, main content, and in here we could have uh, a header. Oh, sometimes we should, we should just forget that I use the proper number of spaces for indentation. That is two. Not three, not four, not five, two. Okay, anyway, <laughs> welcome to the wonderful and magical world of React and uh, Beard to White Dom. Alright, and then we can say P. React is the best front end framework. Uh, oh, framework. And also we could add uh, yeah, something else. Uh, this course is powered by the uh, awesome grande omega.com academy. Shameless, absolutely shameless self plugging. All right, anyway. Um, and, and you know, we can write whatever we want. And one of the cool things though uh, is that if we have extra data, let's say that we have some flex. So, show a uh, shameless plug and let's say that this is true for now and this could be a this could be a parameter we'll, we'll turn it into a parameter in a moment and we could say that this bit can only will only be activated if show shameless plug is true so if show shameless plug is true then this show this course is powered by the awesome grand magnetic academy otherwise we use the placeholder element which is um the empty tag, it's called the React fragment. And in React, sometimes we can also use this uh, because uh, suppose that you have multiple things that you want to put, like uh, one paragraph and uh, uh, one input, etc. but you don't want to be forced to add an ugly div around it. Well, you can logically group React, uh, React tags, React elements in this empty fragment. But in our case, we just want it to be empty. We, we want it to be nothing. But we need to have something because these are all expressions. And so there needs to be, uh, well, we cannot leave it empty. Just a compiler error. Yeah, it says, well, colon expected. Okay, very good. So we can have, oh, and uh, let's actually make this uh, parameterized. So uh, let's say the show shameless plug comes from main. Okay. Uh, and now we have to go to the index.html here main is called and you say well now we want to to see the plug uh, simple browser uh, go closed 5000 oh, there you go and here you get the shameless plug now let's uh, go back to oops yeah okay close yourself close yourself uh, okay, let's go here. Let's set this to false. Let's save. And simple browser HTTP localhost 1000. Let's enter, and there you go. The shameless plug has disappeared. Hmm, very good. And so, in doing this, what we've uh, achieved is the ability to assemble the virtual DOM dynamically in a way that depends on a parameter and then the virtual DOM is calculated so this 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 doesn't end up anywhere in the DOM the DOM has no clue uh, it's either line 19 or line 20 that it gets added to the virtual DOM and then the virtual DOM without any business logic because the business logic has already been put in our code in order to produce the desired virtual DOM then the virtual DOM is translated let's say 101 without thinking much by react into the dom and there you go and then at the next iteration maybe these parameters change and that is all about state management and apis but we will see this uh, we will see this later for now 
what we're going to see is that the real power of reaction management of the virtual DOM lies in its ability to define new elements that are not part of the HTML standard, but which are part of what we need, what our domain of our application is actually supposed to do. So for example, let's say that I actually want to turn this into a separate component. So let's do it like this. Let's say uh, const shameless plug. And well, this actually takes, takes some input. This actually takes some input. For now, we're going to say show shameless plug. Which is a boolean. And then we just return based on the value of show shameless plug. Uh, the shameless plug or nothing whatsoever. And here we can say, okay, now just call this shameless plug function with well, the value of show shameless plug. There you go. Now let's try this. Simple browser. Can I remove the HTTP? No, I cannot. Okay. okay, now we have the shameless plug. Let's change the index to false and simple browser refresh and it's gone very good but as you know I like keeping the shameless plug okay and now well the nice thing is that uh, there we go we have the, the shameless plug let's say that we also want the main content to be separated so uh, here let's say const the main content and the main content We'll just take no parameters whatsoever. Well, oh, here is where the React fragment gets useful because I, I want to group these two things, but I don't want to add an, an arbitrary div that would screw up my HTML structure. I could call main content like this, and actually everything would simply work, but in a stroke of what looks like magic, I can also call it, well, call it, well, I am calling it uh, by simply treating it as an element, as a specific element. <laughs> nice, right? And then perhaps we might want to say, okay, you know what? And now we can compose things together. I could say, no, you know what? The main, the, the shameless plug is actually part of the main content. It's actually part of the main content. So I just put it here. You know what I'm also going to do? Because we're going to talk about properties the next time. I'm going to move the shameless plug definition and the main content uh, inside the main so that the sh show shameless plug variable is, is already defined here because there is a bit of a there's a bit of a trick to passing variables uh, without having to use this ugly curly bracket structure. And there you go, now it's also very pretty. This is the principle of composition, and the principle of composition is incredibly important because thanks to the principle of composition, then, well, we have the show shameless plug and now we can use it wherever we want. We could also, okay, this would, wouldn't make a lot of sense, but if we need it in multiple places, we can just use it in multiple places. And so here we say, okay, there's just the main content, and... Uh, then there's the main content, the main content refers to something else, and the main content could be used in multiple places or could be rendered in different ways depending on the situation. Like you could have, uh, um, you could have, for example, the main content full screen on the browser, but you could also decide that it's uh, in one column and there, there's another column which, I don't know, shows uh, some thumbnails that allow you to quickly jump from the main content uh, of one page to the main content of another page in a sort of PDF reader fashion. Uh, or you could say that yeah, it's still the main content, but maybe it gets some uh, different structure around it, like the article or the div or whatever, and so on. And that's the power of capturing these components, this principle of composition, and also this abstraction of modularization of components is incredibly important. Uh, and later, as we uh, don't have this dependency from this pesky variable, which is a bit annoying here, we will also start moving our components to different files. 
which is exceptionally important. All right. So now let's actually uh, go to a slightly well. Let's let's actually you know remove the parameter because it's. Uh, I'm anticipating something I really want to show you guys, but it's not that time yet. Yes, there we go. So actually, now we can start splitting things because the main content, well, would make sense to actually organize it in a in a logical way, and also, you know what? I'm going to consider the shameless plug to be a footer. So we're going to split this application even more. So you have the main content, but this I want to split into, into a header. There we go. So this is the header. And this will not be the shame. Well, this is the shameless plug, yeah, sure. But I also want to have a footer. And footer simply calls shameless plug there we go okay now here in the article we're going to have the header the main content and we're going to have the footer and of course better to have a reasonable structure for this as well. Uh, okay, much better. And I think actually that the main content should be left by the article and yes, this is a better semantic structure. Okay, for this I always lean on uh, on either Google or the opinion of experts, because I'm not an, an expert when it comes to HTML5 and semantic HTML. And honestly, I find it very important also to remark that it's good to respect that, that knowledge if you don't have it. So we're going to focus on React as a, a coding and business logic management framework in this course. But I think I'm not super far from how things are supposed to be. The last split I'm going to make is this. So I'm going to turn this into a constant in module scope. Yes, very good. And this will be called the page. And there you go. Okay. And I think we're all set. All right. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to create a logical uh, folder structure for uh, all of these little components because this is the magic of uh, one of the magical properties of React and I really am not joking about this is that uh, as the, the application grows we can keep it organized and keeping things organized is fundamental you could say that it's the single most important property of, um, of programming Human brains are not really made for all of these weird symbols. Like our brains were evolved for very simple tasks, like pick up the stick, don't pick up the snake, even though they look very similar. Or, you know, uh, you can eat the noodle, but don't eat the cable. You know, that's an extension of that. It's very good because if you try to eat the cable or if you try to eat a stick, you could hurt yourself, you could choke, you could die. If you eat something that's edible, that's, that's great, you know. These are the things our brain was supposed to do. So we have to be very respectful of the incredible ability of our brains also to do this kind of weird stuff like managing a React virtual DOM. But we also have to realize we have to avoid cognitive overload at all costs. So we have to keep things small, simple and disconnected from each other, abstracted away. So modularity and composition. So what are we going to do? We're going to move all this to a file. Which file? Oh, no, 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 not an existing one, sorry. Uh, move all this to a file, new file path. And where will the file will be? Well, it will be the Academy Frontend Live Coding Client. And then, yes, it's going to be in page. 
and then we're going to say that yes it goes to page dot tsx and the folder page yeah of course i want to create it okay now let's take a look at what's happening yes the page folder has been created and there is a page file inside it okay very good now we're going to split again because well inside the page we're going to have a header so there you go move to file new file path and again it's going to go in the header folder why because there might be other things in the header that we might want to split further then we're going to do the same here move to file new file path um, in content and off we go yes then both the footer and the shameless plug move to the file footer there you go the shameless plug i'm going to leave because for now i consider the shameless plug to be a part of the footer but we might also want to move it somewhere else now at this point this, this file here is small enough that well it shouldn't be a concern the size of this file at this point but we might also consider that the shameless plug if it's supposed to appear also in other places we can also move it separately and it doesn't necessarily to be under the footer so if we need it somewhere else we could have a, i don't know the um, common library the shared library of things that are reused in multiple places and the shameless plug might end up in there all right and remember when i said that webpack is going to take care of uh, uh, merging all things uh, of stitching all things together well first of all let me make sure that things are still working properly and they are nothing is happening nothing is broken and also look at the fact that of course we are importing page from dot slash page slash page and one of the very good things is that we also have intellisense here that's absolutely awesome okay uh, and also in this file you know we have the same we import header main content footer etc but if you go to the bundle look so here we have main content of all, all of this super weird stuff and here we have the page and you, you see that there are still references to the original files um, and here is the code for for the header and here you see the actual header function coming from this oh you can also see the footer and the shameless plug it's almost recognizable but the most important thing is they're back in one single file one very, 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 very big single file. So you can also see that here is um, basically all of React. Bam, bam, bam. This is all of React. Any library is going to end up in this gigantic spa.bundle.js file. Also our own things. Also meaning that these files will be readable by the user through the browser developer tools. So do not put anything secret like API tokens, API keys, etc. because all of this will be scrambled a little bit, but still very much readable and recognizable uh, also for the end user. Okay, there was one last thing I wanted to talk about today. Suppose that we have something like a list of items. And this is an unordered list or an unordered list doesn't matter and then we have a bunch of items uh, item one item two three four five six okay now whenever there is an array of elements all with the same type or uh, types that are similar enough huh? if we refresh this application and take a look at the console Oh, well, let me install the developer tools very quickly. Ah, 
Oh. Well, it's also a very good idea to render this list. There we go. The list is on the page. Let's refresh this page. Okay, now we have um, now we have um, the elements. One of the problems that React might have with such a list, especially if the list is dynamically computed, so especially if the list comes from an array uh, in memory, and so it's calculated element by element rather than just being a, a constant list like it is now, is that as the elements might change, React has to check for every element in the virtual DOM, every element in the list in the DOM. And this could be slow because if you have, let's say, even a hundred items, which is not a lot, then for every item you have to do a hundred checks. So it's a hundred checks times a hundred. And all of a sudden we're talking about 10,000 checks, which is quite slow. This can make the reconciliation um, actually visibly slow for the user. So we could say a list item one, uh, pardon, as a key for item one, and using the key attribute, we are giving React a hint to say, you know what, as you see this element here in the virtual DOM, try to put it or, or only look at an element in the DOM with the same registered key. And this obviously saves the React a lot of time because it can jump directly to, uh, to, the, proper, uh, to the proper element. And actually, let me see if I can generate uh, the complaint from React. Let's say we have these elements, and these are item one. Oops. Item two, item three, item four, item five, item six, item seven. The React is now being more clever than I thought, uh, honestly. Uh, okay, so elements dot map, and for every element. Now we generate list item with the value of the element. Okay. Now let's refresh this. Yes, uh, there we go. Now we get the complaint saying each child in a list should have a unique key property. And it also says very helpfully check the render method of a list. Okay, so now because I know that element can also act as a key, but in general, uh, if it were a more complex data structure, you would use a, a unique identifier as it is stored, for example, in the database. And now the warning is gone and the React will be guaranteed fast as long as the key is unique and it really has to be unique. So there cannot be duplicated keys. All right, now, I would say that for today, this is actually enough. We've seen uh, what uh, JSX looks like and uh, how we can actually assemble the scene uh, and how this scene is first stored in the virtual DOM and then this is translated into the DOM. We talked about custom components like our page, header, main content, uh, etc. Components are all custom components that make code more readable, more modularized. Uh, and closer to the business or domain logic of our application. And finally, given that the virtual DOM has to be quickly transposed into the DOM by finding which elements are the same and which aren't, we've seen that the key property can be used in order to give React sometimes some very much needed hints about what to put where from the virtual DOM in the DOM without having to go through the whole DOM and the whole virtual DOM to actually have to reconcile them uh, very slowly. As always, thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much for following. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you've uh, managed to get something out of this uh, little class. Have a great day and see you next time. Bye bye.